Hi everyone, Ian here. I'm just going to go through some of the new features in Cavalry 2.2 Beta 1. And uh, a lot of things to do with strokes here, so let's get started with those. Uh, let's draw ourselves a shape. Head over to the Stroke tab and uh, you'll see there's a new color mode. And if we change this to gradients, you'll see that we have gradients along a stroke. Yeah, uh, this has been a long, long time in the making. However, they are very, very simple to use. Just a normal gradient. Um, and that's it really. Um, they work with all of the cap styles um, and they'll work with dash patterns, for example, as well. Uh, it works with tapered width. Um, and it works with trim. So something to be aware of with trim is that the gradient is going to map to the length of the path, not the trim length. So we'll add an option for that in the future. We'll also add an option for different interpolation on the gradient as well. But this is just a normal gradient in Cavalry. You can add colors and whatever as, as you would normally. Um, so that's it, gradient along a stroke. Um, so we also have um, a new ability to add multiple strokes to the same shape. This is done with a new multi-stroke attribute down at the bottom of the stroke tab here. Um, this UI won't stay forever. We're going to tidy up the stroke UI in the future, tidy this up and put some settings into popovers and things. Um, but at the moment, if you want to add a second stroke or many strokes to a shape, you hit the plus button here, choose either stroke or stroke duplicator. What is a stroke duplicator? Well, uh, let's say I want 10 strokes in here. You can set that in the count attribute at the top here. And then I want all of those to be different colors and to be wider. Let's make them wider. And I want them all to be different colors. So let's add this array, color array. And then I'm going to just drag that color onto the color attribute of the duplicator. So they all have different colors now. You just can't see them. The reason you can't see them is because uh, they all, they're all occupying the same space basically so we need to uh, do something to make them different either by adding a stagger to the width or oscillator to width or whatever or by um, changing the trim so let's do that we'll right click on the trim end and we'll add a stagger to that so now each of the strokes is finishing at a different end point you just can't see it because the stagger is the wrong way around so let's flip the stagger graph and then you can see that. And uh, we can also, we can edit this if you want. You can double click on here, add a point, and you can map this. You can animate this. There are keyframe buttons down here. You can do that. Um, so yeah, you can do whatever you like. And then obviously this is cavalry. So um, everything is kind of procedural and linked in. And you can uh, go into the color array and you can change the color. And it's all just, you know, it's all real time and lovely in cavalry. Anyway, so it all works. It's all hooked up. It's all very nice. Although that path I've made is really terrible. Um, but um, that's that's kind of it for kind of adding multiple strokes, just to have some fun. You can create some interesting looks here. Oh, um, something else I'll show you. Uh, you can add tapered width here. You can see this, how the, the stroke is working. All of them start at the same point, right? Um, but they all finish at different points, which is why the tapered lengths are kind of different. So just be aware of that. You can, you know, add a stagger to the start if you want to. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's just uh, something that you can um, uh, play with. Right, so other new things. Um, there's a new demo scene for text, a variable font demo scene. Uh, actually, shall I show you the, I'll show you the random dash pattern uh, first. This is a new demo scene. It's just setting, using JavaScript to create a random dash pattern, basically. Um, and uh, so each of these circles has a different random dash pattern. Anyway, that's, um, that's kind of it. Just a short script in here. This demo is our new, this is showing off our new uh, scripting font. Um, which is less interesting. Um, I'll show you the text demo now. So we have a new variable font demo scene. Uh, this is just um, showing. Um, this is just showing the uh, um, how you set up this cascading kind of weight effect. Um, these top three layers aren't really needed. Uh, they're just here to uh, add some interest to the color. But really, really, what's going on here is we have this apply typeface. Uh, utility so if i scroll down here um it's a style behavior so apply typeface um we have this set to monster at which is variable font and then in the font axes here wait uh, we have a behavior plugged in and that's an oscillator so this is the oscillator that's plugged in there and it's just it's cycling between 100 and 900 um, and each character is getting a different value and that's because this index mode is set to character you can make it word line whatever you wanted to um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty simple. So that's how you set up this kind of cascading variable font weight effect. We see it a lot. We see it a lot done in Cavalry, but people have, uh, do, are doing it in different ways. This is the simplest way to do this now. Um, so just be aware of that. 
Uh, okay, cool. So we have other other features. Um, I'll demo. So um, I'm going to show off the range fall off. So if I add a style behavior here and add, let's call that apply font size, so we can set the font size of some characters. So we could do characters, words, lines. We can do with specific indices. We can have it with uh, regex or regex if you prefer to say it that way. Um, or we can um, set the font size of all of the characters. Now, if we do that, then we can add a fall off. Well, you can add a fall off for word and line mode as well. But um, if you use the all mode, so you're setting a font size on all of the all of the um, text, uh, you can then go into fall offs. Add right click fall off and add a range fall off. Now, by default, the range fall off uh, is set to specific indices, so it's kind of only affecting the first and last character, which you can see here. But you can change this to percentage, and you can move this uh, percentage kind of um, effect through the text if you want to. Um, you can also uh, use a graph, so you can use this kind of um, fall off graph, attenuation graph, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, to control the effect and uh, you can make some interesting and wonderful custom bespoke whatever you want to do effects in here it will all just work and you can then move that through if you want to move that through the effects whatever whatever you want to do um so that is uh, that's the range fall off now the range fall off it doesn't just work on text it works kind of everywhere so i'll create um i'll create a circle an ellipse uh, make this a bit larger, then I'll turn on stroke and I'll turn off fill, just make that a bit easier to see. Wider. Okay, cool. Uh, so on this ellipse, I'm going to turn off Bezier's and I'm going to add two divisions, which means I'm going to have a lot of points on here so I can deform this in a nice and smooth way. Um, you can do it the other way around by deforming and then smoothing, but this way is works fine. Uh, so let's go onto the noise deformer here and then if we go into the fall offs uh, here we can right click and we can go arrange fall off so by default first and last these two points at the top here uh, but we can change this to percentage so we're affecting a specific percentage of these points uh, and then we can again use the graph to attenuate that to give us this kind of an effect so this was a, this was possible before by using the normal fall off it's just it's much easier to do it this way anyway so like I said uh, the range fall off works anywhere that a normal fall off would work. Um, cool. So next up, I'll show you the new normal fall off uh, modes. So let's just make a small square, pop it in a duplicator, and then make lots of them. Okay. And then let's open the rectangle, and I'm going to add a new behavior. I'm going to add a color blend in here. So uh, the color blend just basically interpolates between two colors. Uh, let's make these two colors more interesting. So we're going to go between these two colors here. And we're going to do it with a fall off. So let's go into the fall offs tab, right click on fall offs, go add fall off, normal fall off. Uh, so as you can see, this is just what normal fall off does. Um, nothing exciting here. Um, however, if I just let's move this back to the, to the middle, like we can use, uh, we've got two new shapes in here. We've got sweep. Uh, sweep is uh, like the sweep gradient, basically, so you can control a start and an end uh, for your um, effect if you want. So it's kind of a, a radial effect. Oops, now I've done <laughs> zero, zero. Definitely don't want to do that. Uh, 360 in there. Um, and you can also repeat the effect. So you can have um, the effect take place twice, or you can have it take place uh, four times around the circle, whatever you want to do. Um, and that's, that's kind of that sweep. Um, and we also have a new one, a new mode in here, which is shape. Uh, so shape requires a shape. So let's add, let's add a polygon in here. I'll make this a bit bigger, and then that polygon. I'm going to drag it down into the corner like that. I'm going to hide it, and then on the fall off here, I'm just going to drag that polygon into the input shapes here. So that polygon is now the fall off shape. Um, so you can increase the distance on this. You can make it so it's a simple inside outside check. Um, uh, and then, of course, obviously, you can just you can control the, uh, the the graph, the fall off of that, the attenuation of the fall off, as it were. Um, so yeah, um, we've got two new two new shapes in here. Should uh, make for some interesting effect possibilities. And that is everything I'm going to go through in uh, in this build. Actually, one more thing: if I just load a an asset in here, or if I load a few assets in here. Um, we now have uh, we now have uh, previews in the uh, in the asset window. Uh, so this works with um, spreadsheets um, as well. 
Um, let's just load. Let's load one of those at fruit.csv, I think it's called, somewhere on this computer. There you go. <laughs> um, so if I just hover over that, you get a preview of the spreadsheet as well. Um, and yep, yeah, that's it. So I hope you, you all enjoy this first beta and let us know what you think and I'll speak to you soon.